Welcome participants. Now I am going to do uh, the lab demonstration 1. This time we are going to demonstrate to you the basic analysis of a weft knitted fabric structure. So fabric analysis is one of the key elements that every student in textile engineering should know. So in a analysis of a weft knitted fabric structure, there are many things which you need to understand whenever you see a fabric in your life. So the first thing when you are doing the analysis, you should be knowing the machine details like on which machine the fabric is being formed, what was the type of the machines, uh, what is the gauge of the machine. So machine gauge is the number of needles uh, which are being used per unit inch uh, on the machine and the loop setting, what loop settings has been used to make the, to produce the fabrics. Also you need to also give some brief idea of what is the type of the fabric, whether it is a single jersey or double jersey, whether it is being formed on a single bed then it is called single jersey, when it is being formed on a double bed then it is called double jersey, uh, whether the fabric is flat or circular, whether the fabric is doing curling, what is the appearance of the fabric, can you identify technical front or back what is the unraveling conditions of the fabrics, can you unravel the yarn from the fabric from both the ends, how you can symbolize these fabrics. Although many of these things we have not covered so far, uh, but uh, some of this uh, I am going to demonstrate you how you can identify some of these general informations of the weft knit fabric structure. So you have a weft knit fabric here, this is the common machines which is used for making weft knit uh, fabrics, we will cover this in week number 2. Um, we have also introduced you the technical back side when the loop is being formed on the back side. In this case you can only see the head part and the sinker part and this is the technical front side of the loop. You can see the, the loop is being formed on the front side of the back uh, old loop. Here legs are visible. So this is technical back loop and this is technical front loop. In doing analysis some of the keywords which you might encounter frequently. The first one is the yarn count, what is the yarn uh, which is used for making this fabric, what was its linear density, tex, tex is generally defined as the weight of the yarn uh, in 1000 meter length of the uh, yarn, uh, whales per inch, how many whales you can count per unit inch, uh, whales is spacing, what is the distance between two whales in a series, course per inch, how many courses you can count uh, in an inch course is spacing distance between two courses, uh, stitch density is how many loops you can count per unit area. So we define this as a number of loops per inch square. Loop length is also one of the key things that you should also learn how we can find the loop length. So loop length is the actual length of the loop which is being used inside the fabric. GSM, GSM is the uh, gram per meter square, it is the weight of the fabric which is expressed uh, per meter square, so weight of the certain area that is called GSM, we express this in gram per meter square. Some of the key fabric parameter is KW, KC and KS, this uh, I am not covering today's, but uh, probably in third or fourth week uh, in geometrical model you will come across these fabric parameters. The tightness factor which we define as under root tex by L. So this tightness factor is also uh, one of the key parameter in fabric analysis that will let you know whether the fabric is porous or not. So it is, it somehow indicates the fractional coverage of yarn inside the fabric structure. So tightness factor, if, if this factor is more, you can assume the fabric is very tight. So obviously if the fabric is very tight, then the porosity or the permeability of the fabric uh, will be hindered. So tightness factor is also sometimes useful when we are comparing uh, different fabric structures. So uh, let us do the analysis of a simple fabrics. Before I start, I am also going to give you uh, different types of fabrics that are being used in textile engineering. Uh, we start from some of the fabric samples. So the first fabric sample uh, you might have seen your real life is uh, the woven fabrics, which is made by the interlacements of warp threads and weft threads. So it goes up and down like this. Uh, the second fabric structures which you might have seen um, is the knitted fabric which uh, we are going to analyze today. 
Okay. So, this is the, uh, the normal knit fabric structures. Okay. So, in knitting I have also introduced the two types of knitting fabrics, one was uh, uh, weft knit fabrics and the another one with uh, mostly warp knit fabrics which is not that extensible. So, you can see here this is the warp knit fabrics. Okay. So, this also we are going to analyze uh, after 3, 4 weeks and uh, the another one is the braided structures, you can see here. So, this is the structure mostly used in ropes or covering, this is also one of the key fabric which is used in textile engineering. Okay. So, each fabric has different techniques to analyze, but today's we are going to focus mostly on uh, weft knitted structure. So, let us see two types of weft knitted structures, one is single jersey. So, this one on my left side is, this one is single jersey structure and the other one is double jersey structure. You can clearly see the structure has uh, different nature. So, one is curling from the edges and this uh, structure looks much more stable. Okay. In coming weeks, I am going to uh, let you understand why these structures are uh, having different nature, why one is curling, why one uh, is more stable. But for the time being, you just assume that this uh, structure is curling, mostly single jersey structure, this one is double jersey structure. Um, if you try to see this fabric, so um, as I mentioned in the technical front side, you can only see the technical front side of the loop. So, you can see this is the leg part of the fabric. So, um, let, let me show you technical front part. So, so, each loop, so this is your leg part, okay. So, this is your leg part. If you reverse this fabric, again it, it will look like similar, technical front only you can see on both the surface. So, this is on this side also technical front, but if you see a single jersey fabric structure which we are going to analyze today, uh, the structure looks completely different. So, uh, first of all uh, you can see here this is the technical front side where you can see the legs okay and this is the technical back side where you can see only the head and sinker part so this is you can see so this is head part and this is the sinker part okay certain things which we need to analyze for any fabrics so since uh, uh, the first thing which we are going to do is uh, um, is the regarding the machine details like what type of knitting we used for making this fabrics. So, the first one is weft and warp. So, obviously, uh, the fabric which we are dealing is uh, weft knitting. So, this is the weft knit machine. Okay. So, this is the weft knit fabrics which we are uh, analyzing. Machine type flat and circular. So, the fabric is mostly a flat panel. So, it is not circular like your uh, hoisery or stockings. So, definitely it is a flat bed, so flat bed. I am going to give more information about these technologies in coming weeks, but for the time being this fabric is produced on a flat bed, single or double bed. So, um, more it is it is being formed by a single bed and that is why it is curling. This also I am going to describe you in couple of weeks. So, for the time being you can just assume this is a single bed fabric and the fabric which was not curling here, uh, this was basically formed on a double bed machine. Machine gauge, so machine gauge is, uh, uh, it is defined as number of needles per unit inch. So, in a 1 inch, how many needles are being placed? So, this uh, again when we uh, describe the machine, I will go let you know the machine gauge. It generally varies from 2 to 50, so it means 2 means 2. Um, 
needles per inch, 50 means 50 needles per inch. Um, different technologies are being there, but uh, in reality, this particular fabric is being formed on a machine needles per unit uh, inch was around 6, so 6 needle per inch. Loop setting also, this is one of the technical terms we used on the machine. Uh, so, we, if we want to create a bigger size of loops and smaller size of loops, so at that time we uh, use this word loop setting. So, at this moment we have set the loop uh, setting of 10. So, these uh, all, all of these things might be new to you. Uh, definitely in second or third weeks we are going to cover more about uh, this. But the general informations, uh, you might have uh, some understanding. The first one is uh, fabric type, single or double jersey. So, naturally this fabric uh, is a single uh, jersey fabrics because it is being formed on a single bed because you can see only one type of loops on the surface. So, this is a single jersey. Uh, more details uh, in week number 3, you would be able to understand what is a single jersey fabric and double jersey fabrics. Curling, so curling naturally you can by looking to the fabric itself, you can see it is curling from the edges, you can see here, the moment you are leaving this fabric, it is being, it is curl from the edges. So yes, it was curling from the edges. Uh, more interesting part is, uh, when you try to understand this curling, you can see the curling is, uh, this is the uh, technical back side and this is technical front side. So, on one side you can see it was curling from the front to back. So, it is curling this way, okay. So, front is visible, but if you see the curling from the other edge, so if you open the fabric, other side will start to curl. So, here you can see the uh, back side is curling. So, so naturally the tendency is on one side, on this side, it is curling from front to back side, but on this side, it is curling from back to front side, okay. So, this is uh, some interesting uh, nature of this fabrics. Um, I am going to um, give more details in subsequent weeks, but for the time being you can understand this is, yes, this is curling and the nature of curling is evident, but if you see other fabric, for example, this fabric, it is not curling. So, this is the basic difference between a single and a double jersey structures. So, one will curl definitely, if it is a single jersey, it will curl and if it is a double jersey, it will not curl. The third thing which you need to understand is the appearance. So, can you identify technical front and back? Uh, in the lecture also, I have showed you what, is, what do you mean by technical front. So, in technical front, you can only see the leg side. So, this is your technical front and technical back, if you see this, you can only see the head and sinker part. So, this is head and sinker part. So, this is your technical back side and this is your technical front side. This is technical front side and if and this is your technical back side. So, I hope you would be able to understand uh, and identify. So, let us let us look at the unraveling part. So, unraveling basically indicates uh, whether you can take out the yarn from the fabric. So, uh, when you realize the fabric production on the machine, you have seen the first course is uh, formed at the bottom and the last course at the top. So, if you start pulling the yarn from the last course, you will realize the loops are coming out. So, this is called unraveling. So, loops will just come out and the fabric will collapse and yarns will be released. If you take the other side also and if you will try to pull the yarn, the same thing will happen. So, you can see here the unraveling is happening from the other course also. So, you can see here unraveling is happening from the both sides. So, if you see the fabric, the yarn can be pulled from both the courses, from the uh, first course and from the last course. So, um, so, it means this fabric unraveling can be done from both the sides. 
There are certain other fabrics where, uh, especially in rift fabrics, you will realize uh, the unraveling is only happening from the last course. That we will discuss in the subsequent lectures. You can do the unraveling. So yes, from both ends. Now the fabric simple, it is always better to represent this fabric with some kind of simple. So if I am going to represent this side of the fabric, if I am going to represent this, this side of the fabric, so you can simply, you can have all the loops in the back side, okay. And in on all courses, it is the same. and you can count number of columns. So the repeat unit, if you just want to repeat, uh, um, this is technical backside and the other part is technical front. In technical front side, the other part is technical front. So if you want to um, find out technical front side, so this is your technical front side and we denote technical front side by cross. Okay. So uh, fabric symbol also um, the key things which I hope you would be able to do that. So this is the basic general information, general nature of the fabric. What is the, uh, whether it is a fabric single jersey, whether it is curling, uh, from which side, what is the curling nature, um, what is technical front, what is technical back unraveling, uh, whether it is doing unraveling, yes or no, um, fabric simple. So these are the some things which you should be knowing how to um, represent this fabric structure. Now, now come to the most important part, which is fabric analysis, uh, especially the structural characteristics. So structural characteristics, the first thing is we need to find out each of these things um, individually. So the first thing is the yarn which is being used to make the fabric structure. So the yarn which is used here in making this particular fabric, the, the text was around 194, okay. You can, uh, the finding yarn count is very easy. You can follow any standards in textile. In reality, you just take the weight and you find the length, take their ratio. So the yarn text was 194. 0.4 tax. Tax is generally represented as gram per thousand meter of yarn. The second thing is whales per inch. Whales per inch, it, it means how many columns you can count in this fabric. So whales per inch. So this is your fabric. So how many columns you can count in a per unit length? So you can count right now from here itself. Um, I have a scale with me. Okay. So I can count from here to here. Okay. So um, in one centimeter, this is one centimeter scale. So you can count one, two, three. Three and half. Okay. So one, two, three and half. So how many columns you can count per unit length? And that length is inch. So sometimes we use pig glass. This is the pig glass. So this is this is the normal pig glass, and this is automatically uh, one inch. So you can put the pig glass. You can put the lens here, and you can count how many. Uh, whales are there. So uh, this process is very simple. So right now, uh, number of whales per inch is 8. Okay. Whales spacing is nothing but uh, the ratio of uh, whales per inch. So W you can, uh, whales spacing is the distance between two whales. So you, you can g uh, easily find W is 1 by capital W. So is equals to 1 by 8. Okay. So this is 8 whales per inch, so 1 by 8 is around 
0 0.125 inch. So, distance between two loops this is 0 0.125 along the course. This is 0 0.125 inch. Similarly, course per inch uh, to find out the course per inch to find out the course per inch you can put the pig glass and you can count. So, this time uh, or maybe from the scale also you can count how many courses you can count. So, uh, for example, here you can see here. So, uh, in, in this length, in 1 centimeter length, how many courses you can count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, around, around 5, okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and half, something like that. So, uh, but if you use peak glass, you would be able to um, differentiate m more easily because it gives you more enlarged view. So, uh, right now the, the courses per inch is around 11, 11 courses per inch. You can definitely convert inch into uh, centimeter, you can convert then courses in inch. Course spacing again, C is 1 by capital C, this is 1 by 11, distance between two courses this is equals to 0 0.091 inch. This is nothing but the distance between two loops along the column. A stitch density, a stitch density is number of loops per inch square. To find out a stitch density, either you can take out the area and you can count number of loops in that particular area. Otherwise, the most easy way to find the uh, stitch density is stitch density is nothing but the multiplication of whales per inch and cores per inch. So, 8 into 11, this is equals to 88 loops per inch square. Okay. The other thing which is there is loop length. So, to find the loop length, so what is the uh, length of the loop? So, in loop length, uh, we have to include the sinker part as well, the two legs and head part. So, to find the loop length, um, as I showed you the unraveling part, so you can unravel the yarn, you can unravel the yarn, you can count how many columns are there, how many columns are there and you can just divide it. So, total length divided by number of loops. So, you can take out the length of an entire course, you measure that length, you count number of loops. So, number of loops you can count from number of needles that are being used on the machine. So, uh, we have calculated the loop length which is equals to 1.2 centimeter so far. I already done this. GSM um, again uh, fabric weight per meter square, you can cut the fabric, you can cut the fabric and you measure the length, you measure the width, you measure the weight. So, GSM is weight divided by area. So, gram per meter square, so right now we have calculated this, uh, we, we are around 320 gram per meter square. Okay. Uh, fabric parameters, uh, the formulas are already given um, Kc to find the Kc. If you know the course spacing, you know the loop length, you can easily find Kc or if you know the whales spacing. So, the Kc is L by small c, you have already loop length, you have find out 1.2. So, your c is 0 0.0091 inch and loop length is around 1.2 centimeter. So, first you convert 0 0.091 into uh, centimeter, 0 0.091 into 2.54 is equals to 0 0.23. So, 1.2 centimeter divided by 0 0.23 centimeter. So, 1.2 divided by 0 0.23, 5.2 
one seven. Okay, this is your KC. KW is L by W. Again, one point two centimeter. The value of W is zero point one two five. So you first convert into centimeter. So zero point three one seven five. One point two divided by zero point three one seven. Three point seven eight, and K W uh, K S is equals to K C into K W. These are some fabric structural parameters. I will come with these structural parameters uh, in most probably in fifth and sixth week. But for the time being, the calculation is very simple. So just try to understand the calculation part. Um, so the K S K S is equals to K C into K W five point Two one seven into three point seven eight. This is equals to nineteen point seven two. Okay, and the last part is tightness factor. So tightness factor is nothing but square root of tex divided by length, loop length. So square root of tex, tex we have already calculated here one ninety four point four. So square root of one ninety four point four, and loop length is. Loop length is 1.2 centimeter, so 1.2 centimeter. So 194.4, and the square root is 13, 13.9 divided by 1.2. So 11.6 tex per centimeter. Okay. So this is how we do the calculation. Okay, some of the things which you might able to absorb at this moment, but especially the fabric parameters and tightness factors, and uh, this is some have some significance. I am going to cover this in detail maybe in third and fourth week, but for the timing, this is the whole analysis you everyone must do whenever they play with a knitted structures, and we can we can make the. Um, Comparison when you have many fabric structures. The other thing which is very interesting is like if you let's suppose if you have done some mistakes here, if if you have done some mistakes for for some reasons, you would be able to uh, easily um, check the correction. So for example, GSM theoretical. So we have already calculated GSM, three twenty gram per meter square. Okay. So that GSM you can also calculate theoretically. By using yarn tex, loop length in meter, and stitch density in loops per meter square divided by thousand. So let's try to calculate this and see if we are reaching around three twenty. So yarn tex is one ninety four point four. Loop length is one point two meter uh, centimeter. So it means one point two into ten raised to the power minus two into stitch density. So st stitch density we have al already calculated 88 loops per inch square. So we have to convert this into meter square. So 88 into 1 by 2.54 into 2.54. These are in centimeter and into 10000. This is a per meter square and divided by thousand. So let's try to find out how much we are getting. So 194.4 into 1.2 into 88 divided by 2.54 divided by 2.54, and then you have so many zeros. So one, two, three, three, and uh, this this. Uh, And this is the power minus one. So this is around three eighteen point one nine gram per meter square. Okay. So three eighteen point one nine, but the actual value was three twenty. So you can see how close we are. So it means um, our calculation is completely okay because the variation in calculated and theoretical, experimental and theoretical is almost. similar so this is how we do the fabric analysis uh, so the key um, take from this 
lab is you should be able to first identify what structure you are dealing you should be able to uh, understand on which machines we are making these fabrics also you should be able to understand the general nature or behavior of the fabric curling appearance its symbol and and also the basic structural characteristic like thread spacing gsm tightness factor so these are the things um, you must try to analyze so we are stopping the lab demo right now um, in the next week we are going to start with the machines how we make loops on flat bed machines so um, i hope to see you very soon um, in the next week thank you thank you very much for watching